<clears throat> so five to the addition rule and complements. Two events are disjoint if they have no outcomes in common. Uh, disjoint events are also, also called mutually exclusive events. So those two terms are used interchangeably being disjoint and mutually exclusive. Slide this over some. All right, so the addition rule for disjoint events. If E and F are disjoint events, then the probability of E or F occurring would be find, uh, would be adding the probability of E and the probability of F together. But once again, they have to be disjoint events. In other words, they have nothing in common. All right. I don't the purple. Okay. So before we get into an example, just explaining uh, house rules of state, setting the house rules for a deck of cards. Uh, so we have a standard 52 card deck. That means no jokers. So there are four suits, spades, clubs, diamonds, and hearts, two black suits, in other words, two, uh, there are two colors, black and red cards. So you have two black suits, spades and clubs, two red suits, diamonds and hearts, 13 cards in each suit, three face cards, 10 regular cards. Your three face cards would be king, queen, and jack. And then the 10 regular cards, ace, and the numbers two through 10. So ace is not a face. Give me a chance to write that down. Everybody done with the black. Okay. Suppose a single card is selected from a standard 52 card deck. Compute the probability of drawing a king, and then compute the probability of drawing a king, queen, or jack. So we want to compute the probability of drawing a king. 
First thing we want to establish is the total number of your sample space. Remember, we don't have to list out each card. We just need to know how many cards we get to choose from. And that's 52. And then you ask yourself, how many kings are there in the deck? There are four kings because there's a king for each suit. And there are four suits. Once you know how many cards you have to choose from, then the number of kings you have to choose from, then you put the number of kings. Remember, that's our event because we're choosing. We want to know the probability of getting a king. So 4 over 52 would be that probability. Reduce it down to 1 over 13. So we have a 1 out of 13 chance of getting a king. All right. So before we go to B, questions on what we did there for A? Should we all right? So we're going to similarly do the same thing for the probability of king, queen, and jack. Now we have three different uh, categories, three different set, uh, set of cards that we're looking for. We're looking for the kings or the queens or the jacks. So now the first thing you want to do is ask yourself, are these events mutually exclusive or are they disjoint? And the answer is yes, because there's no such thing. Um, in other words, you know, the answer is yes, they do not have any cards in common. There's no such thing as a king and a queen. You can't pull a card and get a king and a queen. There's no such thing as being a queen and a jack. So you have your kings, your queens, and your jacks. They do have no cards in common. Um, it's not like there's a king of queens or a queen of jacks or a jack of kings. You know what I mean? So um, they have no cards in common. They're mutually exclusive. So we'll find each one of their probabilities individually. And it just so happened that, you know, all three of these are the same in which, you know, the sample space is going to be the same 52 in each uh, in each case because you pull them from the 52 card deck. There are four kings, four queens and four jacks. And so in each case, we would do four over 52. That would not always be the case, of course. That's just the case when you deal with king, queens and jacks. You know, if they ask about uh, find a probability of getting a king or a uh, heart. You know, there are more hearts, there are 13 hearts, you know what I mean? So um, th in this case, we're looking at king, queens, and jacks. So that's why everything's the same, four over 52. There are four kings, four queens, and four jacks. So once you've established that, the fact that they, that they are mutually exclusive, that means all you have to do is add them together. And that'll be 12 over 52. And you're gonna reduce both by four and that'll leave us with three over 13. Any questions? Scroll up. Is everybody okay? All right. So a single die is tossed. Find the probability of rolling a number less than three or greater than three. So we talked about a single die before. This is our sample space right here, one through six. So the number of our sample space is six. There's six options, six total number of outcomes. Now, these two events are mutually exclusive. You cannot be less than three and greater than three at the same time. So we found a probability of being less than three, which is what we did right here. We have two numbers that are less than three in our sample space. That's one and two. So we put that two over six. Then we do the same thing over here for numbers that are greater than three. There are three numbers that are going to be greater than three, which is four, five, and six. So we do that three over six.
And then once you find both probabilities, you go ahead and add them together, and that'll be five over six. Um, any questions on that? So if I have this right, it's mm -hmm. essentially we're using this to compare the probability of like a singular event to the probability of a bunch of different events that could occur. Well, you're asking yourself, um, there are two events that are in question. You want to know what's the probability of getting one or the other. And there's five out of, you got a five out of six chance of rolling a number that's less than three or rolling a number that's greater than three. So, okay. So that's how you do it. You, ha you have <clears throat> two different events that could occur that you deem a success if you were to get it. So in other words, I'm cool if I get a number less than three and I'm cool if I get a number greater than three. What's the probability of doing that? Okay. Yeah. And then so in order to do that, you have to find the probability of each one of them individually and then add them together. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Understood. Okay, cool. All right, anything else before we go to the general addition rule? All right, the general addition rule. This is for when you have events that are not mutually exclusive. You will take the probability of each, add them together, but then you're going to subtract what they have in common, the probability of what they have in common. And um, I'll show you why that is the case in a second, but this is the piece right here that's added to the general addition rule, because remember, if they're disjoint events or if they're mutually exclusive events, they don't have anything in common. So that's why that piece is not there. That would be zero. And that's why you only look at, you know, those two parts, just adding those two together if they don't have anything in common. But if they do have something in common, we have to do this. And I'll show you why in a second, but I'll just give you a chance to copy that down. All right. Let me know if I'm scrolling up and need to stop. All right. So here we have a single die. It's tossed. Find the probability of rolling an even number or a number less than five. So we're talking about even number or a number less than five. Once again, we already know our sample space is six. This is the same single die. Now, even numbers in that sample space would be two, four, and six. So there are three even numbers. So the probability of getting an even number will be three over six or three out of six chance. I'm not gonna reduce that yet. You'll see why in a second. All right, then over here, we're looking at in the blue, the probability of getting something less than five. Well, the numbers that we have that are less than five are one, two, three, four. So there are four numbers that are less than five. So four out of six would be that probability. Now, these two events are not mutually exclusive. They're not disjoint. They do have something in common. They have the numbers two and four. Those numbers are even and less than five. All right, so that's what we're doing right here. And the probability of picking a number that's even and less than five would be 206. So before we go any further, is everybody okay with all three pieces? And remember, just going back, I'll scroll back down in a second, going back to the formula, you need all three of those in order to be able to calculate what you're looking for. So we have the probability of getting an even number, probability of getting a number less than five, and then the probability of getting a number that's even and 
less than five. All right. So now when we go plug it into the formula, we have three six plus four six minus two six. Uh, let me make sure is everybody okay with, with this before I scroll back down. Okay, so let me write that a little better over here. So we have the probability of the even number, which is E, I call E, probability of L less than five, and then the probability of E and L. Now, you're probably saying, why do we have to do the minus of what they have in common? Well, if you go back to your list of both, notice in this probability here, you count two and four. But in this probability here, you count two and four as well. So what we're doing in both probabilities, we're actually counting two and four twice. All right. So if we go back here, if we were to, let's say if we didn't do this, notice we would have seven over six, which would actually be more than one. And remember our probabilities can't be more than one. So that's why we have to do the subtraction of when the probabilities uh, of what they have in common, because that will subtract one of the times that we're counting the common terms or the common elements. All right. So once again, you have to find the probability of the first one, find the probability of the second one, then find the probability of the third, uh, the third one, which is when they have something in common, the elements that they have in common. All right. Questions on that before we look at another one. All right. Let's look at a single card is drawn. Single card is drawn from a standard 52 card deck. Complete the, uh, compute the probability of the events of drawing a king or drawing a diamond. Want to know what's the probability of drawing a king or a diamond? So once again, the first thing you want to ask yourself are the events mutually exclusive? The answer is no, because if nothing else, they have the card, the king of diamonds. So that means you have a card that's a king and a diamond. So you have that one card that's in common with both events. So we have to find the probability of all three, probability of king, probability of diamonds, and then find the probability of being a king and a diamond. So there are four kings all together. So that'd be four over 52. There are 13 diamonds. So it's 13 over 52. And then there's one king of diamonds. And so that's one over 52. So before I go any further, make sure we're okay. All All right, so now you plug those into the formula. Probability of king plus probability of diamond minus the probability of king and a diamond. 4 over 52 plus 13 over 52 minus 1 over 52 gives you 16 over 52. Fours that are in common with both numbers and that reduces down to 4 thirteenths. Yeah. <laughs> 
<clears throat> Any questions? All right, last thing of this section. Looking at the complement of an event. The complement is going to be all outcomes in the sample space that are not in the event. So the notation we will be using is this E with this C superscript. That just represent the complement of event E. All right, so your complement, the complement rule can be used in one of three ways, depending on what information you're giving, what you're trying to find out. So if you want to find the prob probability of the complement of your event, if you already know the probability, probability of the event, you can mine it or subtract it from one. If you want to know the probability of the event and you know the complement, you can subtract that from one to find it, or just recognize that you have a relationship of the probability or event plus the probability of the complement of your event, when you add those together, they will be equal to one. So both of those, you know, revolve around one, and you can find the other one if you just subtract it from one. All right, so I think this is the last one, not next to last. According to the National Gambling Impact Study Commission, 52% of Americans have played state lotteries. What is the probability that a randomly selected American has not played a state lottery? Give you a chance to write that out. So the probability that someone has played the state lottery is 52%. So you correct that to a decimal is 0.52. And then to find not played goes back to your complement rule. It's either played or not played. Um, you subtract that 0.52 from one and that'll give you 0.48. And so my math lab will let you know if they want it in percentage or decimal. A lot of times it's just one of the decimal. And um, but yeah, that'll be it. I guess. Okay, good. <clears throat> uh wait one second could you go back up mm -hmm. how far you want me to go um just back to the part right there the the in the red okay the part in the red down hold on hold on tell me that one yeah. now you are you talking about <laughs> the <this> red <laughs> yes Okay, well, yeah, this uh, this is this not one for you. This we ours only went right here. The the played, yeah. I just wanted to see. Oh, okay, yeah. Thank you. Yep, not a problem. But once we got on track, right, try to figure out what you want. <laughs> so let's see, let's see. Um, so that is it for five two. I mean, this part right here was just, you know, somebody asked about a fraction, you know, so same thing is just doing factual work. Subtract the one thirteenth from one, be twelve over thirteen. Yes. But um, yeah, so um so we could, of course, keep going, but I'm going to hold off. 
chapter five is only four sections. Uh, so you notice we only did one section last last class, did one section this class. Uh, we probably could have knocked out all four sections this, this week. But I'm trying to give you a chance to uh, get in there, knock this stuff out in uh, my math lab, because you know you got chapters one, two, three, and four that you guys need to take care of and um, test, you know, two tests out there. So I know, I, did, I don't think I looked in this class. I know my, my last class, my other class, a little bit behind. So I'm trying not to, you know, throw a whole bunch at you at the same time, we can't do nothing. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, take advantage of the time, you know, hopefully you'll be able to knock some stuff out over the weekend. Of course, if you have any questions, make sure you bring them to class so we can talk about them uh, or shoot me that email. Um, outside of that, uh, any questions before we close? All right. So uh, we'll pick up here next class at 5.3. And uh, have a great weekend. Be safe. And I will see you on Tuesday. Thank you. Have a good Thank day. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. You guys take care. All right. You too.